like a like a Hanzo or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, Julian is is a natural counter towards the Ling. You know where the Ling is going to pick up the sword, so you prepare your enhanced uh, scythe there. Yeah. Thank you for, for confirming. Thank you for, you know, supporting like my the, DOD, by the way. I like the affirmation as well. You know, our, our casters are very nice. They're so nice. They're not like us. We're very no, toxic to each other. We are. You guys... We're like, horrible yeah, people. I mean, we got to balance Emulate it. Emulate what they did in the previous matchup. Going into this, can they get a win off the Queens of MLB team of Vitality? The massive win streak they've had. We've seen this even back for MSC. Uh, and how this plays a part in all of this. You know, for, for Title Legends Gaming, they, for Title Legends Gaming, they got to bring the tide once again. They got to come help it rise. Yeah. You know what I mean? They took a dip after game two against GGHG. And again, stepping up to Team Vitality. But looking at the draft now, maybe all you need, maybe all you need is a little bit of refinement. You know, take a take a bit of what your opponent used in game one. Recalibrate how Chokes plays on this Julian, and maybe there's something there. I think uh, even part of that, like going off of that, the Edith. The Edith could play a, a big part in Title Legends controlling. I feel like that's one of the things, but from what we've seen so far, especially in the competitive landscape, Zas can be a, I don't know, a, I was going to say an alien in the side or the thorn in the side of all of these teams that have to face against this, you oh. know, because the this, this slow alone that comes from, from Zask is tough to deal with. I see what you're trying to say, and from my point of view, it's such an alien pace to fight a Zas. Yeah. He ends up with an extra life, a style of damage that we're not used to, like it, it, it's, it's a DOT with a little bit of a slow. It feels awkward. It's very awkward. Like again, you're, you're, you're from a different planet when you fight a Zass, and is TLG ready for that? That's the question. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, nothing too crazy happening in the early portion of this game. It's very, think, it's very calm. It's very calm uh, leading into this first objective because I feel like for both teams, that's really what they want to play around is these level fours. Once Fumieko also gets this penalty zone, uh, that's where you're going to see them try to make a play. If anything, now that the turtle has spawned, you, you'll notice that TLG are up maybe 300, 400 gold. Yeah. Stable. Their farming is a better rate now, at least against Team Vitality in the opening minutes. Now the turtle's up, less than half health. Chokes very far off. Kinzaki with the spear and the suplex coming through big oh. penalty zone. What? Down goes the turtle. Chokes secures it. She's on fire right now. And so is Kinzaki taken down. Serving up the kill to Chini. Another one. Bay goes, but Vival falls. Oh. At the hand of Chokes. Now the fight continues. Can Vival get out of there? She dashes through. Chokes wants to finish the job. Knocks her off. But again, tricky passive on that Tigreal. And both teams walk away with a little something. Yeah, they both get something out of that. You know, it's, uh, they win in. It, it, interesting, because I want to look at this again from STC, the replay. Interesting that Chokas gets that turtle. I feel like the retribution was also just off from Vivil there. Uh, and even the placement wasn't on part from, uh, you know, from T TLG. It's level five retry. Yeah. Chokas on the right. Druin was just a little faster a little than faster. the scaling Ling. That's true. That's true. You know, it's... Which is interesting the way that it went because for Team Vitality, it, you still you still see that awkwardness with the Zask playing part in that. They Gets two kills. It. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah. So Sydney has two kills now that she can go ahead and play around with the the, the spike of the Zask too. You know, dealing with these little aliens is already enough. Nightmare spawns. The nightmare That's spawns. Such a perfect name. It's a nightmare dealing with them. Hey, it is. It is. And uh, now that you have an early kill, uh, early two early kills. On the Zask, it will be a, more of a nuisance to deal with, but we'll see. For TLG, they are maintaining that minor gold lead that they had, but I think this is where you want to see, okay, at this point, you have to make plays, you have to find setups, you have Bay able to use I'm Offended when she rotates to these objectives, if that's the choice. But even so, like, this is what I was saying with the Edith, you know? Like, this is a big play uh, potential that you can use with the Earth Shadow combination. Yeah, despite being a two-in-one, TLG are in a much better shape than they ever were in game one. Yeah, right? definitely. Uh, four minutes in, they're up by about 300, 400 gold. Again, they're, they're keeping that solid lead. Uh, as small as it is, it at least allows them to be competitive and forces Team Vitality to choose how they engage. Now the turtle's up. Less than half health now. Oh, this is a, this is a quick take. I think they just give it up. Oh, 
Will they? In comes Kenzaki, repositioning herself. And there oh. goes one more time, Deja Vu! Joker secures the turtle! Vivante's out Kenzaki, though. Tempest of Blades up. She's in the air. Taking down Chokes. Two for one so far. And Cheney scores another one. Make it three. All right. That, you know, Chokes gets the turtle. But at what, what cost? cost? Right? I mean, look at this again. The STC replay. Good setup. But look at the implosion. That was, I mean, we have talked about the Tigreal pickup so many times. That's why. All on Vivian. Yeah. All on Vivian. And... The truth of the matter is, I'd reckon a huge chunk of why she is able to walk into these engagements and be on the brink of death or even barely take any damage is because of how well she plays with the passive. Yeah. She, 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 stack, stack, stack. I'm coming in. Yep, I'm here, right? And uh, she does it like, that was a multiple setup implosion and we saw this even previously in an exchange where she didn't go down. Like you said, she plays with that passive very well. And that's a cornerstone of what's allowing even this lineup from Team Vitality to build up the way that it needs to. Again, we're talking about timing. Shell is just having that hell of a time, farming up. What do we call it? Work. What do we call that? We call it the gold, gold lane, lane experience. experience. And what's crazy about her gold lane experience is in, in olden times, I'm talking about like olden nine months times. back. Yeah. Back in my would, day. You would need a roamer to, to help you out, yeah. right? Or a, a massive rotation from your mid duo even but so far even in game one of this series she's been having the golden experience alone yeah and i think uh, again th when you have it's usually for a claude especially that's exactly what you want uh oh they're actually gonna go for vivian but find her kenzaki was like an inch off on yeah. the onward yeah unfortunately uh so they're not gonna get anything off of that also turtles now up here so far though hey chokas has been on point We'll see if she can grab another one and make it three for three, but they don't want to have that same kind of at the cost that they had in the previous it one. It can't be a Pyrrhic victory anymore. Like, yeah. it has to be as clean as possible. Maybe a, a trade, but not a losing trade the way that that last engagement went. Bay here pulls the trigger on the I'm offended. I, I don't know why she pulled it so early. Now the turtle, at a third of its health. So Kess looking for the Oh, get him! The implosion! Chini secures the turtle and it's all going downhill from here. Tidal Legends crashing into a wall and it's named Team Vitality. Oh yeah, the wave can't get over that one. Okay, she's gonna get spotted out too by the little alien. Goes oh, in. It looks like it's a losing battle, Chokes. Uh oh. Spotted out by Vivian. Vivian. Knock stop. Chini's gonna deal enough damage here. Oh, dashing through the iframes. Shell gets the kill. Yeah. So it's and I wanted to say before that turtle broke out, the, TLG has done a good job, I would say, in game two, in comparison to what we saw in game one. But with these exchanges, they haven't found out an answer to that play yet. Like they haven't dealt with Vivian's setup potential. Yeah. And I think that's the that's already step one. You have to get over that obstacle somehow, some way. How do you do that? To be honest, again, just how Chinny's Zask is playing a very alien game yeah. and how its pacing is so unfamiliar, almost extraterrestrial. Yeah. It's the same with how TLG are focusing so hard on the turtle that maybe Team Vitality doesn't even want the turtle. They that's don't need true. it. They're playing on a different wavelength. It's a different priority for Team Vitality, and that's what allowed for them to skyrocket out of control way ahead. 4,000 gold now. 4,000 gold at this point, and you can see the, the choke point now for Team Vitality is to go ahead and take the resources. They can pretty much do this because uh, ultimately they're just waiting for the Lord to pop up, right? Put the pressure here. You take a look at the items real quick. Obviously for TLG, they still need a lot of time. You do have Corrosion Scythe and DHS now in the hands of Yunuhoi. Hasn't died. She's been okay. She's been able to farm herself. But at what point does this carry start to play the role in these team fights in these exchanges? You know, for the most part, like we said, even in the beginning of the game, you're really just kind of relying on the fact that you have a Julian that can use use a lot of damage early on. You've got a Vexana, but it's not enough to deal with that lead that Team Vitality has now. And now Lord's up. When? I'd say after the implosion. After Vivian commits and shows herself and it's a clean go for Tidal Legends Gaming, yeah. that's when Hinwe is able to do her job. But looking at the map and how quickly Team Vitality makes work of that Lord, mm -hmm. TLG are clearly on the back foot. I, I, maybe under their under their turret, under the base. That that 
That's, that's my yeah. guess. They might be under their own wave at this point because like we saw, Lord was just cleanly taken. Lead is there for Team Vitality. And like we saw from game one, they ended it in about 12.20, 12, 12 minutes, 20 seconds. They're gearing up to get close to that position. They're going to take these tier twos now, especially on the bottom lane, and put the pressure on TLG's base. Let's talk real quick. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. We'll talk about it later. After Chokes is taken down, there were there was what, a, a 2% chance you would have survived that. Yeah, see, how do you so how do you avoid the implosion when it comes from the bush? <laughs> like, uh, you can't. To be fair, TLG have a huge dilemma, right? They have very little check, uh, yeah. checking potential. And now, Bay's in trouble. Taken down by Fumi Echo, one quick swing of the mallet. And just like that, TLG are holding off for their inhibitors. Yeah, going back to this, shields are all going to go down too. Lord's still top side, so they're down two members as well. And it looks like Team Vitality, again, might try to do the same thing, possibly even quicker. That last shield's going to go down here. Lord makes its way. They got four members now up. Bay should be up in just a second as well. So they're going to have the full force defense. They're going to lose that mid lane turret, though. They deal with the Lord. I think their eyes are going to be set on this top side, too. Oh, Even see him. Vivian once again. All the way. Big three woman implosion. Down goes Yin Wei. Choke S as well. This is just a matter of time. Bay goes down. So does Kinzaki. And it's just Vermouth left. Just Vermouth. And that's Vivian. That's my MVP. That's my coat for this game, too. And in fashion, there it is. The queens of MLBB. It's giving slay. It's giving slay. The mother of tanks. Undoubtedly number one. I'd say MVP of this game, maybe even the series. Yeah. Never. Thank you so much to our amazing hosts as we get back into the studio, ladies and gentlemen, with me, Eterna, alongside with LaFell. And we're going to take a look into the highlights of this best of two over from game number two. Honestly, I have to echo what uh, Shell did say in mm -hmm. the interview. It was like, honestly, they know what they're doing. They're able to dodge our engages, and then they're they're finding ways to get any kind of trades back. So, honestly, this does show how strong TLG really is, because in this match, we definitely see a lot of glimpses where TLG could really take it. But I got to agree with Naisu, man. Vivian's the MVP for this one. Look at all those crazy implosions. And there were even two purifies, right, on the side of TLG. Yinhuai picked up the Purify, Vermouth picked the Purify as well, but with the way that they were able to layer their resources with the penalty zone coming through and then Vivian comes in with the Implosion or either way around or vice versa, right? It, it worked so well and they timed it perfectly. Yeah, again, like this is why we keep talking about this Tigral pick. Yep. Sure, there are ways to fight against it, blah, 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 I mean, you know, boring schmoring, but Tigral's <laughs> pretty strong. Like that, that 